More usually, bubbles are connected to innovation, and one incident of recent times that combined the shock of the new with a bubble of belief was the dot-com boom. The dot-com revolution was associated with people talking about the new economy, you know, that somehow economies, because of the great productivity enhancement that the IT revolution um, brought about, that somehow we could even avoid the business cycle. No more busts, just booms. Based on a belief that the internet would revolutionize the way the world worked, it helped create businesses from the most unlikely beginnings. Soccer Net was almost an accident, really. It was entirely down to my son, Tom, who was then age 12. He, like me, had always been interested in football. The uh, puzzle was why he kept running in and out of the living room every Saturday afternoon. And it was because he was memorizing the football results, going back to his computer, posting them on a server in Chicago, unbeknown to us, and um, thousands of people around the world were finding it and looking at the results. And this was not just before Google, this was really before Yahoo um, and way back in the days when there was barely the web. He had to sit there with the dictionary on his knee uh, trying to make sure that he spelled the words correctly because no one knew for years that Tom was only a 12-year-old boy. Reading up on what was happening in the States at the time, I got the feeling that this possibly was one of the great inventions of mankind, that this was going to change the world in the way Gutenberg had changed it in print. So we built the brand from scratch. I had to stay up till one, two in the morning, and often having to rely on Tom to stay up till 10, 11 o'clock at night after he should have been doing his homework and gone to bed to put up Barnsley 1, Huddersfield 0 on a wet Wednesday. Um, and it was, it was exciting. Virally, millions of football fans around the world who were joining the internet, getting, getting connected, um, spread it by, literally by, I would say, word of mouth, but of course it was word of email. Eventually, it became a hot property and big business started to be interested and big money. Everyone was talking about the internet. There were ludicrous valuations. Um, there were people who didn't know how to build but knew how to buy. I still bump into people who I offered, I think it was 30% of Soconet, whatever that meant, for £60,000. Soconet was benefiting from the dot-com hype that would ultimately lead to an explosive worldwide bubble. If you've got a story of um, a 16 or 17-year-old creating a business in a back bedroom on his home PC, which is suddenly making him and his family worth uh, millions, that's obviously going to be attractive to the media. The media's job is to sell papers. It's no point saying it's really boring, the column is only growing at 2%, but everything's fine. I mean, you know, why are you interested in that? You're much more interested in the housing markets booming or the housing markets declining um, or the housing markets declined and we see green shoots. By and large, the, the average media, I think, unfortunately, is involved in uh, fueling the bubble. But all that does is to just create an enormous amount of noise rather than actually generate any information. At 11 a.m. this morning, the company's stock went public and Wall Street went bonkers. Initially offered at a price of $28 a share, Netscape shot up to 72 within minutes. Co -founder... Even to me, the valuations were crazy. Uh, but you went along with them, obviously, because there was a certain amount of kudos for having a valuation. You don't realize you're in a bubble. You realise that life is exciting, that the stock market is going up. And it wasn't just the dot-com boom that was fueling the stock market. There was a, a general upturn. In 1999, Soconet is bought by Disney, by ESPN Disney, and it's sold for $40 million. How many companies have you run so far in your life? Um, well, I started off with a football internet site when I was 12, and I'm now working on an education, inter uh, education internet site, Schoolsnet. And how old did you say you were? I'm 17. It all started with a 12-year-old boy doing it himself and then involving his dad, who did do his fair share of work and uh, will probably forever be known as the father of Tom Hadfield, and I'm totally happy with that. <laughs>